Well, I want to bring in some uh, monetary aspects here. Um, this has been debated uh, over the last two, year, two days here at the forum. Do we have right enough currencies? Do we need more? Do we need less? Um, what could be a possible solution here? The question may be to our uh, Nobel Prize laureates. Mr. Mandel, I know that this is a topic that you're interested in. Uh, yes. We'd all love to see a more expansionary monetary policy on the part of the European Central Bank. <clears throat> the, uh, the difficulty is with the constitution of the bank, and uh, which was laid down by the Bundesbank and um, very much de rigueur, and uh, it uh, means that the, theoretically at least, the uh, European Central Bank can't to undertake any actions, it's going to increase the inflation rate when it uh, threatens to be outside the range uh, of, of what it should be, of the 0 to 2 percent limit, for example. Uh, of course, you could make the argument that um, if uh, Europe went into a great crisis of some kind, uh, the crisis might end up with a, a, a blow up that would lead to a much, a big outbreak of inflation. And you could say, make the argument that uh, more expansionary monetary policy now would be a kind of therapeutic that would uh, uh, maybe raise a little bit of, of worry, uh, but uh, would be much better than the alternatives. And that in that way, you could make the argument here. But the problem here is, just inside inside Germany is the uh, threat that the uh, chancellor is going to be taken up to the courts for the constitution for for uh, allowing or, or permitting uh, a, a, an adjustment of that kind in the, on the European Central Bank. Now, what uh, what we did get was a tremendous uh, trillion dollar expansion. In, by the European Central Bank, which was a lending uh, resort that was a, a really averted what would otherwise have been a crisis. But if we're in a if we're in a deleveraging crisis, the threat is really a downward threat of potential deflation here. And I think the um, European Central Bank has to find some way it can uh, t <coughs> take risks in this uh, d direction, risks, it, because the, the threat of, uh, of deflation through insufficient deleveraging de is, is the bigger than otherwise. Let me just say, if I can say something else, but economists don't, um, don't in a way, have very much to say about the problems in Greece, because uh, most economists, my friends anyway, and myself, have been saying for a long time that Greece and Italy and Spain have to clear up and, and reform their la labor markets. And that's uh, such a tremendous impediment to growth. And that the spending has, uh, spending on entitlements is overshot. The welfare state has gone too far. And if it doesn't horn pull these in, it's going to create big problems. Now, if you ever start to raise that question politically, it just is a horror story uh, to, to but, but if it is true, the question really ra is raised whether um, throughout Europe, whether Europe can, in the long run, with a population that's definitely aging and not much population growth, uh, if uh, uh, if uh, Europe, even Germany, can maintain the conditions that they have at the present time with respect to retirement ages and the uh, level of welfare spending that uh, that can be done, can you do it? Now, on the uh, and the the very local, immediate situation, there is this monthly situation of the Greek problem. I think the issue is, as Jacob Frankel was saying this morning, we shouldn't be talking about. Um, uh, growth versus austerity. 
uh, we should be talking about growth versus responsibility. To a certain extent, you have to, the sine qua non of solving the Greek problem is that Greece will take, it will start to own a large part of the deficit and do the things that are necessary to do it. And I hope that it never gets to the point where, where the, uh, the, uh, the Troika has to, uh, has to abandon their very good austerity programs that have been made.